Ciao friends! It's time for a new Unplugged video. In this video, I want to answer with you to one post on a forum. A user posted his code saying that it is faster than the one we propose with the article. This is happening very frequently, especially now, because people are learning how to optimize DAX and therefore they post their solution uh, asking us to check whether there are any issues or if they actually found a good solution. I love that because uh, whenever I see code written by somebody else, I always find new ideas or I find uh, errors or mistakes uh, that I can talk about in order to make you understand what to care when you optimize your code. But I don't want to do a long introduction, so let's go straight to the code and see uh, what the proposal is and how we are going to check the performance. The article I'm speaking about is Understanding Data Lineage in DAX. This article talks about data lineage and I'm not going to talk about the article because it's not the topic of the video. Uh, the article at the end proposes this code, first, say, first, daily, first day sales v4, that's the fourth version of an expression. Now, this measure computes uh, the sales amount uh, considering only the first day of sales. So despite a product having been sold for maybe a year, two years, we only want the sales in the first day, so the day we launch it, the product. And to do that, we first create a variable, products with sales, that contains the product names that appear in sales by using summarize. Then we compute for each product the first sale using calculate minimum of sales order date. And finally, and this is the topic of the article, we use treatas to change the lineage of product and first date so to make a variable that will be able to filter the model. Indeed, the next variable we use the uh, product and first date with correct lineage to filter the model and compute the sales amount. And this is the code we authored. Whereas uh, in the comment, Renato one day ago said, well, excellent as always. Thank you, Renato. Uh, I was rereading your article for study purposes. Now let me make a quick stop here. Rereading an article is like rereading the definite guide to DAX. It's the best gift that you can make to yourself if you really want to learn DAX. There are a lot of small details and it's utterly easy to forget them if you just do a quick read of any article or of uh, the, DAX, the DAX book. So reread, study it, consider DAX as something to study, not just to learn about in a casual way. Anyway. Uh, he was rereading the article and uh, tried the several different ways of writing the same code, which again is an absolutely beautiful way of learning DAX, and he watched an unplugged video. That means I'm recording an unplugged video about uh, a guy that posted an article after I having seen another unplugged video. But uh, he ended up with this version of the code that he claims is faster. Uh, we are going to analyze the code later. For now, it's important just to see that we have a first version here, and a few hours later, Renato came up with another version, a second version, and actually a third version, which uh, is uh, the best one. So we just copy, uh, we just copy everything, and then we check how it works and how it goes. Now, at the, as a first look, look just looking at group by seems to be a problem here. But uh, we need to test it. So, in order to test it, I have the same model that Renato was using, and I only use it because I want DAX Studio. We are going to run DAX Studio, test the measure, and see how it goes. Let me paste everything, format the code, and uh, then we need to run a query. This is a measure definition, so we need to define a measure. Let's call it sales, first day sales, uh, Renato. And then we need to write a query, like evaluate, summarize columns by product brand, test. Uh, 
and let's use a new line so we can replace that later. And then the measure is first day sales Renato. Let's see if it runs, it does, because we will need to check the performance of this measure against ours. It's also good if we copy our measure, this one, and we define that too. Let's put it later. This is the code of our measure. Okay, and we also need to define that. Let's call that SQL BI. Format the code. So we have first Renato's measure, then our measure, and a test query that runs the first that runs the measure. This is Renato's measure running. I need to enable server timings to check performance. Okay, so let's do a first run. And we have server timings. Renato's measure runs in 12 milliseconds, whereas our measure runs in 14 milliseconds. Now, before doing any other conclusion, there is an important detail here. The difference between 14 milliseconds and 12 milliseconds is not 2 milliseconds. The difference is nothing at all. So there is basically no difference at all between a measure that runs in 10 or 15 milliseconds. It looks like 5 milliseconds is the difference, but that is not true. Whenever you are running on a PC, 5, 10, even 20 milliseconds of difference is absolutely normal, depending on the workload on the computer at that precise moment in time. So do not get fooled by uh, tiny differences because you are not optimizing anything if you just cut a few milliseconds out of a measure. With that said, I'm not here to tell that they run the same way because they actually are two different algorithms. Let's look at uh, uh, Renato's measures and start to think uh, that uh, we will need to have a different database running on uh, the standard Contoso database. We are not going to see difference in performance because uh, what Renato does is uh, create a variable and it uses he uses the group by function. Now group by is very close to summarize, but the big difference between group by and summarize is that summarize can be pushed down to storage engine quite easily by DAX, whereas group by is entirely computed in formula engine. So most of the scenarios group by needs to be much slower than summarize. It is not in this case. They are performing, they are performing in a very similar way. But again, I suspect that this is because of the size of the model. So on a small model, all the measures run amazingly fast. So it's grouping by say it's using group by and it's grouping sales by product name, computing at the same time the minimum out of the current group of the data. Then it uses it uses three tasks exactly as we are doing and finally calculate. Our version of the code is nearly identical. The difference is that we are using summarize and add columns instead of using group by. And uh, as I said, in this model, they are nearly the same. That's why I'm going to use not this model, but instead I'm going to check the difference in performance between the two on Contoso, the full Contoso, the one containing 12 million rows. We need to re-enable server timings. And then we look at the two measures. First, Renato's measure. We run it. Of course, having a larger model, now the speed will be different. Now it's 217 milliseconds. And if we run our version of the code, it runs in 86 milliseconds. Now the difference starts to be meaningful because uh, one is running in half the time of the other one and the difference is around 120 milliseconds. So you can measure that. But uh, we need to understand it better. So let's go to Renato's measure and see exactly what it does. 
Okay. This is the measure and do we have everything here? Yeah, the measure and the code here. There are two storage engine queries. You see the first one and the second one. As I told you, group by is a function that runs entirely in Formula Engine. So how is the engine going to answer this query? This query is grouping sales by product name and computing the minimum date out of the, the minimum related date. It's actually the minimum sales order date. But this code needs to be executed by Formula Engine. Therefore, DAX requires to create a temporary table that contains the product name or the dates when the product was sold and finally performs the grouping by, so the, both the group by operation and finding the minimum entirely in Formula Engine. This requires a materialization that is visible here, that it's uh, computing quantity times net price uh, and uh, it's uh, selecting brand. No, sorry, I was looking at the wrong one. It's uh, selecting product name, product brand, and the date. So for each product and brand and date, it's retrieving the three columns. You see that uh, there is no mean here. There is no group by operation. There is the mean operation, this mean X, is not being executed by storage engine. Out of this table, it will uh, formula engine will compute the minimum value. And indeed, the materialization of this table is quite large. It's half a million rows, which I guess is the combination of product brand, product, product name, product brand, and data. We can actually give that a try. If we create a new query and we evaluate count rows of summarize sales by product name, product brand, and date, and we pack everything into a table, okay, and I run it, you see that the result is 500, uh, half a million rows that are all the combination of product name, product brand, and date. That is exactly the same number we have here. So storage engine is creating a data cache containing half a million rows on top of which formula engine computes the minimum. And then we have another query that computes uh, other values, but this contains uh, the filter and uh, the sales amount. So I would expect to find the very same query also in our version. There are other important details to note here. Uh, the ratio between storage engine and formula engine is not that bad, but the parallelism of storage engine is not that large because storage engine spent most of its time building this large data cache. What happens if uh, we run the same on our model? So instead of or with our measure, we use the SQLBI measure. If I run that, because I used summarize instead of using group by, this is our code, I expect summarize to try to push most of its operation down to storage engine. And you can see that here. First of all, the materialization is much smaller. Before it was half a million rows, now it's 2.5 thousand. We have two materialization of 2.5 thousand and one of 14 rows. And the first one computes by product name, product brand, the minimum of sales order date. Here is the key of why our measure is faster, because the mean operation is not executed in storage in formula engine, it is executed in storage engine. And we do not require to have all the combination of product, brand, and date. We only have product, brand, and minimum date. So depending on how many sales you have, this will be way, way smaller. And uh, it's a lot smaller, 2.5 thousand against half a million. Uh, the ratio between storage engine and formula engine favors storage engine. You see that most of the code is executed in storage engine and the degree of parallelism is even higher because uh, storage engine actually made more work and it spent less time in computing, in building this huge data cache. So at the end, what it produces is a faster measure that does less materialization. 
because we used summarize. So it was not bad, the idea of using group by instead of summarize, but you need to remember that group by was not designed to work on large data sets. Group by is designed to be one of the last operations during a query. Once you have variables or data structure which are not that large, then you can use group by to push to formula engine the final grouping by operation. But if you need to group large data sets, group by is not your best friend. Summarize is typically much faster. Then summarize has the problem that you cannot compute value, so you always need to use summarize with add columns whenever you want to compute a value. But never replace summarize with group by unless you deliberately want to push the calculation to formula engine. Sometimes that's exactly what you want to do. You have a calculation that is bound to storage engine and you want to get to move part of the calculation to formula engine for whatever reason. Then using group by is your best friend, but not in this case. In this case, using uh, summarize is your best option. And there are some important details that are worth uh, uh, talking about during the conclusion. First of all, you have seen that uh, the same query executed on different databases provides, of course, different numbers. If you need to do performance optimization, you cannot run on a very small database because there the numbers are so small that you can end up with the wrong conclusion. You need to use uh, tens or hundreds of millions of rows in order to appreciate uh, differences in uh, the numbers. The difference between 12 and 14 milliseconds is basically nothing at all. Then, whenever you want to push calculation down to storage engine, try to avoid using group by because group by was not designed as a formula that is able to push calculation down to uh, storage engine. Group by is entirely executed in formula engine, which means uh, slower calculations. With all that said, keep that in mind, trying different versions of the code is the best way to learn DAX. You have a formula, it works, you try to write it in a different way and then again in another different way and you continue this process of testing different examples. All this is extremely important to make DAX stick in your brain and learn a different way of expressing the same code. Thank you, Renato, for your post. I'm going to answer to it in a couple of minutes. And thanks, everybody, for having watched this video. Enjoy, Dax!